Father Antonio Salema, the President of the new Administrative Committee to administer the assets of the Archdiocese at St. Xavier's College and High Secondary School Campus, Mapsa, to formally welcome the Archbishop, dignitaries, and other guests present. The inaugural and blessing of the newly built St. Francis Xavier Chapel. His Grace, Most Reverend Archbishop Philip Neri Ferrao will preside over the Eucharistic celebration. We feel truly blessed to witness and celebrate the spiritual ceremony that is so significant to our lives. My dear friends, the Archbishop has arrived. We extend a warm welcome to His Grace. I request all of you to kindly rise as we sing the hymn, Mogal Guru. request Reverend Father Antonio Salema, the President of the new Administrative Committee to administer the assets of the Archdiocese at St. Xavier's College and Higher Secondary School Campus, MAPSA, to formally welcome the Archbishop, dignitaries and other guests present. Good morning to one and all. On behalf of the Committee for the Administration of the Assets of the Archdiocese of Goa and the Man on the campus of St. Zephyr's College and Higher Secondary, along with the principals of the college, the Higher Secondary, the vice principals of the college, Higher Secondary, the manager of, of uh, St. Zephyr's Higher Secondary School. I welcome each and every one of you. Special welcome to your grace, and it says here, and to all my students, the teachers, the parents, and other well-wishers who are present here. It gives us great pleasure to be here today for the inauguration of this our chapel, blessing inauguration of the chapel, as well as other things here. It gives me a great pleasure to say within a year of my joining, somehow we have been able to work to get this 
issue over and come to this happy day with the cooperation of all the authorities in the higher secondary the contractor and other people it was real pleasure that we are finally able to inaugurate to bless and inaugurate this the chapel for which we have been longing we had this religious place to pray and yet it was not open to us and from today onwards it will be open for all of us that's and that's our joy we feel so happy about this i welcome you all for this celebration may god bless you all and i have a nice day reverend father peter da gama the manager of st xavier's high secondary school will now brief the congregation about the various sure. events that will be unfolded this morning your excellency archbishop philip neri ferro our principal dr elvis consalves vice principals ms margaret dias and brian duard members of the pta our staff teaching non teaching students and my dear friends we are all gathered here this day for these three important reasons pertaining to our institution blessing of our new chapel inauguration of the washrooms for the male students and felicitation of meritorious students a lot of planning and hard work has gone into the construction of the chapel and the washrooms and it is a proud moment for the management the pta the staff of our institution to see this being accomplished as we prepare for the eucharistic celebration on this occasion i would like to get all of us to thank and praise god with grateful hearts for helping us in our endeavor and to remember the people who played an important role in the planning and construction of the chapel and the washrooms i would specifically like to mention a few persons and names so that we can keep them in our prayers during the eucharistic celebration archbishop for his guidance support and prayers the church and the diocesan authorities namely father noel de costa the procurator of the archdiocese the new administrative committee of the assets of the archdiocese at xavier's campus father agnel fernandes the then administrator who worked for the construction of the chapel father zefirino de souza the president of the dsc father jesus rodriguez the secretary of the dsc father arnold pinho the assistant to the secretary of the dsc we also recall and pray uh, political leaders who supported our project uh, um, the minister mr michael lobo is not here at the moment but we pray for him for his constant support the mla of mapsa constituency joshua souza we also recall and pray for the civil authorities for all the support that they gave we also pray in this mass for the for father adrian for the interior designing of our chapel the architect agnello olivera contractor gopal for the construction of male students washroom carlton pinto son of cedric pinto a well known builder and contractor from duler mapsa for all the hard work done by our principal dr elvis gonsalves vice principals 
Margaret Dias and Brian Duarte. Our PTA is a strong support for us in all our efforts for this chapel as well as for the washrooms, the staff of our institution, the students. We will also pray for all others who have worked, worked on these projects whom I have may miss to mention. We will keep in our prayers the meritorious students who brought laurels to our institution through their brilliant academic performance. We also pray for Sir Newton, who served our institution for many years as a physical education teacher. God has been so good to us in so many ways, giving us this chapel, the new washrooms, and so many other things. And there is no other greater way to thank and praise the Lord than through the celebration of the Eucharist. We pray for all of you in this today's celebration in this Mass. Thank you. God bless you. The Archbishop will now unveil the plaque of the new chapel dedicated to St. Francis Xavier and cut the ribbon to inaugurate it. The Archbishop will then enter the chapel and silently pray for some time. A kind request to the guests to kindly enter the chapel. As the Eucharist begins, the Archbishop will neither kiss the altar nor incense it, but will do so only after the altar is blessed in the course of the Eucharistic celebration. Kindly rise as we sing the entrance hymn, City of God. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God be with all of you in his holy church, and also with you. Dear friends, air is everywhere, and yet we install ceiling fans in our houses to feel the presence of air more intensely and rejuvenate ourselves. Likewise, although God is everywhere, 
we build churches and chapels to feel and experience God's presence more intensely. On the occasion of the solemn blessing of a new chapel today, the theme for the Eucharist is come and abide in me to be my living witnesses. In a busy world, we have no time to stand and stay. We are all rushing. We face so many obstacles in life. There's a dire need to pause, <coughs> unload our burden, and rejuvenate ourselves by God's grace. In such circumstances, God invites us to abide in him. He's waiting with outstretched hands to comfort us. He wants us to feel and experience his holy presence, listen to his life-giving word, and be his living witnesses in our thoughts, words, and deeds wherever we go. There's no better place for such an experience other than God's own dwelling, a church or a chapel, a house of prayer and peace, May St. Francis Xavier Chapel, that will be blessed today, help us, the management's teaching and not teaching staff, PTA and students of St. Xavier's High Secondary School and College to discover God within and bear witness to his love and goodness. Let us thank God, the source of all gifts and wisdom, for the excellent performance of our students at the April 2020 High Secondary School Board Examination with 350 distinctions. May our students abide in God and be his living witnesses as they continue journeying in life. We also thank God for the new state-of-the-art boys restroom block that will be inaugurated today. We thank the Almighty for the gift of Sir Newton Azevedo, our physical education teacher, who retired in July 2020 on superannuation for his dedicated services rendered to our highest secondary school. May God bless us. Let this be our sincere prayer as we take part in this Eucharistic celebration and may we be nourished by God's living word the sacred body and blood of the risen Lord and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, every Mass is a celebration of thanksgiving. And as we have heard right from the beginning of our arrival here this morning, and especially these introductory words have brought home to us that we are gathered here to thank the Lord. So many reasons particularly three reasons. This chapel, which marks the realization of our common dream to have a place of prayer, where the entire community at this campus could have a privileged place to encounter God, to derive strength to be his living witnesses in their day-to-day -day life. We want to thank God for the excellent, brilliant performance of our students last year. We want to thank God for the new boys restroom block. We want to thank God for Sir Newton Azevedo who completes his journey here on this campus. We want to thank God for all our staff members, our students, members of the PTA, and all those who have been part of this journey, especially in the realization of this triple dream. We want to ask God to th bless all of us so that empowered by him we may become his joyful and courageous witnesses. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the day of great rejoicing for we have come to, together to offer this new chapel to God. We ask God that he bless us with his grace and by his power bless the gift of water as it is sprinkled upon us and throughout this new chapel may it become a sign of our repentance a reminder 
of our baptism and a symbol of the cleansing of these walls. But first, let us call to mind that we ourselves who are bound here in faith and love are the living church set in the world as a sign and a witness of God's love for all. Let us pause for a few moments and ask the Lord to bless this water and to bless each one of us. God of mercy, you call every creature to the light of life and surround us with such great love that when we stray, you continually lead us back to Christ our head. For you have established an inheritance of such mercy that those sinners who pass through water made sacred die with Christ and rise restored as members of his body and heirs of his eternal covenant. Bless this water and sanctify it as it is sprinkled upon us and throughout this chapel make it a sign of the saving waters of baptism by which we become one in Christ the temple of your spirit may all here today and all those in days to come who will celebrate your mysteries in this chapel and come here to spend time with you be united at last in the holy city of your peace we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. As the Archbishop sprinkles holy water on the people and the chapel walls, we shall sing the hymn, I saw living water flowing from the temple. May God, the Father of mercies, dwell in this house of prayer. 
May the grace of the Holy Spirit cleanse us, for we are the temple of his presence. Amen. Amen. We shall now sing the Gloria. Almighty, ever-living God, pour out your grace upon this place and extend the gift of your help to all who call upon you, that the power of your word and of the sacraments may strengthen here the hearts of all the faithful. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The liturgy of the word begins now. Let us listen to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commandment to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of God, kingdom of God and while staying with them he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, 
for John baptized with water. But before many days, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of God. Let your response be, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, God of hosts. Kindly repeat, How, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, God of hosts. My soul in longing and yearning is yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my soul ring out their joy to God, the living God. Your response? How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, God of hosts. The sparrow herself finds a home, and the swallow a nest for her brood. She lays her young by your altars, Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Your response? How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord, God of hosts. They are happy who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. They are happy whose strength is in you. They walk with ever-growing strength. Your response, how, how lovely, lovely is, is your, your dwelling, dwelling place, place, Lord, God, God of hosts. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. The threshold of the house of God I prefer to the dwellings of the wicked. Your response, how, how lovely is, is your dwelling place, Lord, God, God of hosts. Kindly rise for the gospel acclamation. God lives among men. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. On the first day of the week, two disciples were going to a village named Emmaus, about 70 miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that had happened, while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation which you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, 
looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleophas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? They said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we, have, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They went at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. And they came back saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He appeared to be going further, but they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished out of their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven gathered together and those who were with them who said, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear friends, I am inclined to think that it is not by a mere coincidence, but that it is by meaningful providential design that we are having this triple celebration during this Easter season, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And as you all must be aware, the resurrection of Jesus, his victory, over the forces of darkness, sin, death, and selfishness is the foundation of our Christian life and faith. And that's why the Feast of the Resurrection is the greatest feast in the life of the Church. The Church celebrates this feast of the resurrection of His Master and Lord, not for one day, not for one week, but for 50 days, the celebration of Easter, which begins at Easter Vigil, goes till the Feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Church celebrates this Feast of the Resurrection for 50 long days as one great Sunday, as one great feast. And the message of the resurrection is that the tomb is empty. As the angels told those who went to see the body of Jesus, he is not there. He is moving to Galilee in front of you. 
there you will meet him you will encounter him the one who is walking in front of Galilee continues to walk among us and that's the message of the resurrection whatever may be the challenges we may be up to for the moment humanity is facing this frightening challenge of COVID but this challenge will pass but humanity and each one of us have to face various challenges and the message of Easter is that the Lord is walking in front of us and that's the message that all the apparitions of the risen Lord give today we have heard one the two disciples going from Jerusalem to Emmaus for a moment I would propose that each one of us joins those two disciples why are they moving away from Jerusalem Jerusalem has been the place where they had fellowship with Jesus for three years they had moved around with him they were so happy with him but now they are facing a situation of hopelessness a situation of darkness and that's why they are going back from Jerusalem to Emmaus a journey of 11 kilometers seven miles they're moving away why because they think this is the end of everything that's all over the master has been crucified killed and we have not seen him so it's all over so they are discussing this situation of hopelessness discouragement disappointment we also face in our journey of life be it individual be it as families be it as communities be it as human family we face challenging situations where we feel discouraged disappointed we don't see a way out such is the situation and when these two disciples and together with them each one of us faces situations Jesus joins them he's a gentle companion he joins them but he doesn't push his way through he doesn't tell them who he is he wants to listen to them Jesus waiting to listen to us he'll be waiting in this chapel to welcome us to listen to us he listens to them he asks them why what are you talking about and they turn to him and they say are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that are happening there and he says what things and they express what they are going through they said about Jesus a prophet mighty in word and deed and our leaders crucified him and we were hoping we had hoped but now our hopes are shattered we thought he would redeem Israel and today is the third day and to add to our worry some women went there and they did not encounter him but they saw some angels and the angels told them that he is alive and they came to tell our own men fellow disciples and they also went there but him they did not encounter him they did not encounter and that's why we are facing this hopeless situation we had hoped but all our hopes are dashed all our dreams are shattered and therefore we are going back we are giving up everything and then the Lord begins having listened to them having shared their anxiety having experienced their hopelessness that's what Jesus does with us in our journey of life he is there even if we don't recognize him and then he begins to talk then he begins to enlighten their life he begins to explain to them the scriptures and interpret them for them throwing the light on their situation of hopelessness on their situation of anxiety the word of God enlightens life situation he tells them how Christ had to suffer had to be crucified had to be raised and as he is interpreting the scriptures breaking the word of God for them throwing the light the powerful light of the word of God on their situation of hopelessness they seem to reach their end the goal and Jesus shows as if he's moving forward he doesn't push his way in our lives he respects our freedom unless we invite him unless we go to him unless we share he is not going to push his way through in our life he is gentle he shows he is moving away but when the disciples freely ask him master stay where are you going the sun is setting it's late at night where are you going 
It's only when they freely invite him, then he chooses to come. He doesn't say no to our invitation. When we ask him, Master, stay with us. Come in my life, come in my family, come in my institution, come in the cradle of the human family. He's ever there. He's no longer in the tomb. And then when they are sitting as a community, he takes bread, he breaks it and gives it, blesses God and gives it to them. And it's in the breaking of bread that the disciples remember, but the master had broken bread to feed 5,000 people. He had broken bread before he died at the table and said, do this in memory of me. And then their eyes are open. They experience the Lord. And the gospel says at that time he vanishes from their sight. They have encountered him. They have experienced him. In the moment he goes, then they look back at the journey and says, weren't our hearts burning when he was speaking to us, when he was breaking the word to us? And now once they encounter him in the breaking of the word, in the breaking of bread, they are empowered. There is an about turn in their lives. The sunset becomes sunrise. Something that seemed to be the end becomes the beginning. Something that looked to be a dark night began, be, becomes a bright dawn. They decide to rush back to Jerusalem. What has happened? They were telling him, it's night. Where are you going? Please stay with us. But now they want to go. They are empowered. They want to go to share this good news that the Lord is with us. And that with his power, with his grace, we can encounter any challenging situation, no matter how hopeless it may look to be. And they rush back to Jerusalem, not counting the cost, not worried about the obstacles they may have to face. They rush back. And what happens when they rush back? They meet the other disciples who, before they could relate what has happened to them, they tell them, we have seen the Lord. He has appeared to Simon. Even the one who had denied him thrice, saying he does not know, he cares for everyone. Even about Peter, the weak who had denied him, he has come to meet him. We have experienced him. And these two tell them how they have encountered the Lord. The Lord comes to meet us. The tomb is empty. He is no longer in the tomb. He wants to walk with us. He wants to accompany us in our journey of life, be it personal life be it family life, be it community life, be it life of the entire humanity, the Lord has chosen to be with us. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. And he has chosen to be pre very specially present in his word. When we read his word, when we reflect, when we pray about the word of God, we will encounter him. He has chosen to be very specially in this Eucharist, he said, do this in memory of me. Come to me. All of you who are worried, who are weighed down, who are facing hopeless situations. Come. You will experience power. The sunset will become sunrise. What looks to be the end from a human point of view will become a beginning. The dark night will become a bright shining dawn. My dear friends, it seems there was a master, a guru, who had a disciple. And this disciple had been many years living with this master. He sometimes could be stupid, but at the same time was very loyal to his master, very sincere, very simple, very humble. And therefore the master kept him. For many years this disciple, Shishya, was with his guru, the master. And though the master sometimes saw him being a bit stupid, he loved him, he kept him. And it so happened, it seems, that in the village in which they lived, news spread round that this disciple had managed to cross the waters of the river and go to the other side. News spread like wildfire. And this news reached the ears of the master. And the master said, oh, he's my disciple, I am his master. How come he performed such a miraculous feat that he walked on the waters of the river and crossed safely on the other side? He called him and he asked him, is it true what I am hearing? It has reached my ears that you have managed to walk on the waters of the river. Is that true? And the disciple said, Master, thanks to you. 
I put all my trust in you. I kept on repeating your holy name on my lips and repeating your holy name I took step by step and I managed to cross the river. I managed to reach the other bank safely. And the master said, it seemed, this disciple of mine, I am his master. He took, he is sometimes stupid, but he took my word and he crossed. Why can't I take my own word and perform such a miraculous feat? And he rushed to that river, it seems, and kept on taking his own name and taking steps. Within a few moments, he got drowned and he died. The disciple took the name of the master, trusted in the master, and with tremendous faith in his master, faced a challenging situation, took step by step, and was able to reach his goal safely. The master trusted in himself, and with arrogance in his heart, took steps very confidently, but with confidence in himself, got drowned and died, did not reach his goal. The celebration of today tells us that the master is here. On those beautiful stained glasses, we have two beautiful pictures. One of the Good Shepherd who cares for each one of us, who cares for every human person, whatever may be our faith, our religion, our language, our culture. He cares. We are dear to him. He carries the sheep in his arms. And on the other side is his mother with open hands, waiting to welcome for us. And on all, all the stained glasses on top, there is a dove. The dove is a symbol of peace. The Lord says, I am the Prince of Peace. Come to me and you will experience power. You will be empowered to be my living witnesses, to be instruments of peace, to be messengers of reconciliation. I pray that this chapel, which we are blessing today, may be a privileged place in this St. Xavier's campus for all of us, whatever may be our religious traditions, to encounter the Lord, to experience that He is with us, to accompany us in our journey of life as a gentle companion, to empower us to be His living witnesses, messengers of peace, and instruments of reconciliation. Kindly rise. My dear friends, the Lord has spoken to us through his life-giving word. And if we are to order our lives in the light of God's powerful word, we need the strength of his grace. Let us now turn to him and place our petitions before him in humility and trust. Our response will be sung. Lord, help to abide in you and be your living witnesses. Lord, help to abide in you and be that our managers, principals, vice principals, teaching and non-teaching staff, PTA, and students of the higher secondary school and college may abide in God and bear witness to the gospel values through their words and selfless service. Let us pray to the Lord. The response. Lord, help you abide in you. that we, the students of St. Xavier's Higher Secondary School and St. Xavier's College through our diligent study, commitment and practice of moral values may radiate God's love and goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help to abide in you. that all of us gathered here as one united family 
may generously utilize our God-given knowledge, talents, and time responsibly in serving one another, especially those in need, with compassion and love. Let us pray to the Lord. that education may inform, form, and transform us to be God's living witnesses, thus making us instruments and challenge of God's knowledge, love, mercy, peace, and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. that the church and civil authorities and all those whose meticulous planning, designing, execution, hard work and contribution have made this new chapel and the boys' restroom block a reality may be blessed abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, we have placed before you some of our needs, some of our longings. There is so much more each one of us would like to pray for. We place before you, Lord, all that is deep down in our hearts from the silence of our lives. Look mercifully on our prayers, and if it be your will, in your goodness, grant them to us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Archbishop will now bless the altar. We shall sing the hymn as we gather at your table. My dear brothers and sisters, our community rejoices as it comes together to bless this altar. Let us ask God to look kindly on the church's offering placed upon it and to receive his people as an everlasting gift. We pause for a moment of silence, asking the Lord to pray, bless us and to bless this altar. Blessed are you, Lord God, who accepted the sacrifice of Christ offered on the altar of the cross for the salvation of the world. Now, with a Father's love, you call upon your people to celebrate his memory by coming together at his table. May this altar, which we have built for your holy mysteries, be the center of our praise and thanksgiving. May it be the table at which we break the bread which gives us life and drink the cup which makes us one. May it be the fountain of the unfailing waters of salvation. Here, may we draw close to Christ, the living stone, and in him grow into a holy temple. Here may our lives of holiness become a pleasing sacrifice to your glory. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The liturgy of the Eucharist begins now. The assisting priest and altar servers cover the altar with an altar cloth and decorate it with flowers and candles. We shall now have the offertory prayers and gifts being brought in a procession. A brick. You are the living stones of the church. This newly constructed and blessed chapel invites us to meet and experience God and bear witness to Him. May this brick that we offer to the Lord remind us of this great mission of being living stones of the church and providing a strong foundation to our students. Tokens of Appreciation Gratitude is the best attitude as we thank God for the excellent results that we have achieved at the April 2020 Higher Secondary School Board Examinations. We place into His hands all our students and their future aspirations along with these tokens of appreciation that, we will, be, that, they, that will be gifted to them. Bread and wine. Whoever eats my body and drinks my blood will live forever. This bread and wine, the fruits of human labor, which we offer to the Lord, will soon be transformed into the sacred body and blood of Christ. Nourished by this spiritual meal, we promise to abide in God and be living witnesses of his love and mercy. We shall now sing the offertory hymn, Lord, I want to, I want to offer you. The Archbishop will now go to the altar, remove his mitre and kiss the altar since it is blessed now.
The Holy Mass will continue in the usual way till Holy Communion. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the gifts of your joyful church be acceptable to you, O Lord, so that your people gathering in this holy house may come through these mysteries to everlasting salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up, up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy. For you have made the whole world a temple of your glory, that your name might everywhere be extolled. Yet you allow us to consecrate to you apt places for the divine mysteries. And so, we dedicate joyfully to your majesty this house of prayer built by human labor. Here is foreshadowed the mystery of the true temple. Here is prefigured the heavenly Jerusalem. For you have made the body of your son, born of the tender virgin, the temple consecrated to you, in which the fullness of the Godhead might dwell. You also establish the church as a holy city built upon the foundation of the apostles with Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone, a city to be built of chosen stones, given life by the Spirit and bonded by charity, where for endless ages you will be all in all and the light of Christ will shine undimmed forever. Through him, O Lord, with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross of resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Nari, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph for his spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and My dear sisters and brothers, through his sufferings, death and resurrection, Jesus has made all of us humans, beloved children of his Father, whom we can call Abba. As we call out to our Heavenly Father, in the words Jesus gave us, let us ask him that he may give us the strength and grace to accept every human person with love and respect our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us joyfully offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take it away the sins of the world, have, have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take God, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you enter, enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. As we rece receive Jesus in our hearts, we shall sing the hymn, Jesu Moja Kirkol Mozo Otmo. Our non-Catholic brethren are kindly requested not to receive Holy Communion. loving Father, we thank you for the precious gift of your Son Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior, whom we have just received into our hearts. He says, come to me all of you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. We thank you for the newly constructed and blessed St. Francis Xavier Chapel in our campus, which will provide a golden opportunity 
to our staff and students to abide in you. Seek your solace and be your living witnesses. We thank you for this pandemic year that has taught us not only online and offline class lessons, but lessons for life too. We ask you to enlighten, guide, bless, and protect our students as they leave the portals of this noble institution and embark on their onwards journey in life. We pray that we may excel, they may excel in their forthcoming board examinations and bring glory to you. Help us to use our physical, mental, spiritual gifts and talents to be instruments of your love and blessings. Amen. We will first have the post-communional prayer of the Mass, after which we will incense Jesus in this blessed sacrament. And after incensing, we will have a little procession with the blessed sacrament. And while the procession takes place, we will sing an appropriate song, Jesus is my shepherd. And once the celebrant reaches there, this blessed sacrament will be kept at the tabernacle and I will incense the Jesus in this holy sacrament again after which all of us will stop singing and we'll remain either kneeling or those who cannot remain standing but we will pray for a few moments before the Lord in this blessed sacrament and after this silent prayer the celebrant will rise close the tabernacle while a priest will light the lamp to mark the presence of the risen Lord in this holy sacrament, we will come back, have the final blessing, after which the decree of the erection of this chapel will be read, the minutes will be read, and those who are supposed to sign will sign those minutes. Let us pray. Through these holy gifts we have received, O Lord, we pray, instill in our minds an increase of your truth so that we may constantly adore you in your holy temple and glory in your sight with all the saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the blessing of this chapel, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. May God, who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered in his Son, grant that you become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May you be made thoroughly clean so that God may dwell within you and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to live as his joyful and courageous witnesses. Thanks be to God. Reverend Father Peter Dagama will now read the decree of the solemn blessing of the newly blessed St. Francis Xavier Chapel. Whereas, Reverend Father Antonio Francisco Salema, President of the Administrative Committee appointed by us to administer the assets of the Archdiocese at St. Xavier's College and Higher Secondary School Campus, Mapsa, has requested us to establish an oratory dedicated to St. Francis Xavier for the spiritual benefit of the students teachers and others who reside, work in the campus. In a room adjacent to the innovation block of St. Xavier's Higher Secondary School. Whereas the room set aside for the auditory is found to be arranged in a becoming manner. We do hereby, in terms of Canon 100 1223 of the Code of Canon Law establish an oratory in the above mentioned room. The Blessed Sacrament may be reserved in this oratory, observing whatever is to be observed in this regard. The oratory is to be liturgically blessed according to the prescribed rite, Canon. 1229 and a document is to be drawn to record the blessing a copy of which should be sent to a patriarchal curia given in goa at the archbishop's house panjim on the 12th day of april of the year 2021 and our signature and the seal of the patriarchal curia signed by His Grace, Most Reverend Philip Neri Ferron, Archbishop of Goa and Daman, and the Patriarch of the East Indies, and also by Father Romeo Montero, the Chancellor of the Archdiocese. Reverend Father Antonio Salema will read the minutes of the solemn blessing of the newly blessed St. Francis Xavier Chapel. Acta benedictionis oratori, Minutes of the Blessing of the Oratory, Saint Chapel of St. Francis Xavier, St. Xavier's Campus, Mapsa, Goa. On the 17th day of the month of April of the year 2021, the Oratory, dedicated to St. Francis Xavier, established in a room adjacent to the innovation block of the St. Xavier's High Secondary School, St. Xavier's Campus, Mapsa, was blessed by His Excellency, Most Reverend Philip Neri Ferrao, Archbishop of Goa and Daman, and Patriarch of the East Indies. The rite of blessing of the oratory took place during the celebration of the Eucharist presided over by the Archbishop. This oratory was established by the decree, CP Decree, Stroke 151, Stroke 2021, dated 12th April 2021, of His Excellency, Most Reverend Philip Neri Ferrand. 
Several priests and lay faithful participated in the liturgical celebration. In a witness thereof, these minutes are signed by the Archbishop, the President of the Administrative Committee that administers the sets of the Archdiocese of St. Francis C of St. Xavier's College and High Secondary School Campus, Mapsa, and some of the faithful who participated in the sacred rites. These minutes will now be signed by the Archbishop. By myself, I request all the five priests to sign it, along with the principal of the high secondary, principal of the college, vice principal Margaret and uh, Brian, and also his sender not there. Okay, yeah. So I invite these people to please come up and sign the minutes. On the right hand side, we'll write your names afterwards. On the left hand side, you just sign. And you have to sign in duplicate. We shall now sing the final hymn, Safrashish Shavira.
development of a child depends upon the hard work of a student, parent, and a teacher. St. Xavier's High Secondary School has always been and will always trend on the path of quality education. At St. Xavier's HSS, we provide not only quality education, but also quality infrastructure. We fortunately have a committed and supportive management, dedicated teachers, cooperative and enthusiastic parents, which blend harmoniously to create a child-centric school. We strive to enhance our students' learning and enrich the lives of our students. One of our greatest projects undertaken this academic year is the facelift of the boys' washroom with an amazing modern setup, a deemed necessity that was pending since long and has now been accomplished into a marvelous and luxurious restroom one would ever have. We are proud to present to you the boys' restroom, the gentlemen's lounge, situated at the basement of the main HSS building. This restroom provides beautiful amenities to our male students. A special feature that it is differently able, student friendly. It has washrooms, shower room, lockers, changing room designed, keeping in mind our sportsmen and a sitting lounge. What more can one have? Cleanliness and orders are not matters of instinct. They are matters of education. And like most great things, you must cultivate a taste for them. The Archbishop will now say a special prayer invoking God's blessing on the boys' new restroom block in the chapel itself. Kindly rise for the prayer. All-powerful and all-merciful Father, you have created all things through your Son and have made him the unshakable foundation of your kingdom. We humbly pray that the boys' restroom block may provide relief and comfort to all who use it. Grant that all who visit this place may be refreshed and rejuvenated and together offer you the praise that is your due. Bless the meticulous planning, hard work, and contributions of all those who have made this boys' restroom block a reality. God our Father, the source of all blessings and gifts, bless this boy's restroom block and all of us gathered here. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Archbishop will now go to the boy's restroom block, accompanied by the priest, dignitaries, PTA executive members, student representatives, and a few other guests, and will unveil the plug, cut the ribbon, and bless it with holy water. As the Archbishop blesses the boys' restroom block, we shall sing the hymn, Showers of Blessing, till the Archbishop and priests return to the chapel and exit in a procession. <laughs> Okay. 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 Okay.